Okay, so what if I told you I have a way to reduce 90% like of the dust and dirt in your home? You're not gonna believe this. Hey guys, I've got nine cleaning hacks for you today. And honestly, these are so good. I, they're truly life-changing. So let's get started. The first one is two things. You need to get an entry mat into your house. Ideally, a, a large mat, not just a little tiny one. You want a large mat that people can kind of walk up. I would say at least six feet long if you have the space. Actually, a green building strategy is to have a walk-up mat because it completely removes particles and dust and dirt from people's shoes. And then the second part of it is to have a no shoes on rule in the house. So we have this in our house. You, you walk in the house, you can walk on the mat that I just talked about, but then you need to take your shoes off and you need to put them away. 90% of the dirt that's in your house comes in from the outside. So it's a win-win situation and it will make your life so much easier and you will have far less to clean when people aren't bringing things in on their shoes into the house. My second tip is to clean as you go. It is so much easier to clean as you're already doing something than it is to sort of think of cleaning as like a separate activity that you need to do. One example, while you're making dinner, just kind of clean a dish while you're waiting for the next step in your recipe, put things away after you use them. There's no need to sort of cook your food and not do anything while you're cooking and then have to clean your kitchen afterwards. Same thing in the bathroom, you know, maybe you're putting on a face mask, go ahead and clean your mirror while you're waiting for it to dry. There are just certain things that you can kind of do and integrate them into your day so that you don't have to sort of do them separately and plan extra time to do them. My next one is to keep your cleaning supplies where you use them. Keep your bathroom cleaning supplies in your bathroom, keep your kitchen cleaning supplies in your kitchen. And then when you see and you're trying to incorporate that clean as you go rule, you can just reach under the kitchen counter and grab what you need and it's right there. Otherwise, you're never gonna go looking for it. It's gonna sort of fall to the back of your mind. You're not gonna know where your cleaning materials are. If you just keep them really handy and convenient, it guarantees that you'll be thinking of them and you'll use them. My next tip is to use microfiber cloths for dusting. They have these tiny little loops that perfectly picks up and latches on to dust. So I like to just use them for dusting and then I just toss them in the washing machine and they're clean and fresh and ready for the next use. Microfiber is also great because they don't leave lint behind. You can use them to clean glass. They're just a really convenient thing when you don't wanna leave dust and lint behind. It picks everything up and they're great. Okay, my next tip is not to forget to clean your fridge. I feel like the fridge is like one of those things that everybody dreads cleaning. It's just something that nobody wants to do, but it's just a really important part of keeping your house clean. And I, I even think like monthly, just go ahead and sort of like remove all of the food that may be expired or that you're not gonna eat, give it a quick wipe down, but then you also need to deep clean your fridge. So an easy way to deep clean your fridge, I'm gonna just sort of tell you how I do it. So first of all, I go ahead and I look at the fridge and then I take a photo, I, I open the doors and I take a photo of everything. I can't tell you how many times I've like pulled everything out of the fridge and when I've cleaned them, I have no idea where to put them back. So if you take a photo, refer to it when you're putting everything back. But then what I like to do is take everything out. I like to wipe down the different things that are in the fridge because I don't wanna put away like a dirty container of food into my clean fridge. So I wipe everything down. I wipe down the glass surfaces. I wipe down the walls. If there's any wall in particular that's difficult to do, I just use like a magic eraser. That works really well on the fridge walls. I take whatever I can take out of the fridge and I wash it by hand. Just use soap and water, wash it like it's like a dish, and then I dry it. Try, I try to take out the drawers, really just like cleaning every surface so it looks nice and fresh. And then the other thing that I do is I clean the rubber gasket on the outside of the fridge. You know, it's, it's a good idea to keep that seal clean and like free of debris and food and junk and all of that. The other thing that you can do is you can put a little bit of Vaseline on that gasket to keep it like from cracking. Honestly, that gasket is like the only thing standing between you and spoiled food. So you wanna make sure that you're keeping that gasket clean. It offers a nice seal and you, you just wanna make sure that it's in good working order. When you're done, you just wanna go ahead and put your food back. The inside looks great. And then I go ahead and I give the outside a little bit of a wipe down. And another thing you can do when you're deep cleaning your fridge is you can actually pull it away from the wall and vacuum behind it. 
and use a cloth, dust the sides and the back. I mean, fridges get so dusty and dirty. They just attract like a magnet, so much dust and dirt. So it's really good to clean these. And a vacuum cleaner is the best option to do this. Just vacuuming behind it, underneath it, get, get in wherever you can. And don't forget to vacuum like the power cord and the coils, you know, all of the different pieces. Okay, my next tip when you're cleaning is to use hydrogen peroxide. This is such a good cleaning product that is very often overlooked, but it works so well. It's actually like a very powerful disinfectant. So I like to use it in many ways. One way you can do is you can spray it into your sink and just let it sit for 10 minutes and then rinse it down and your sink is completely disinfected. I like to do that with garbage cans as well. Spray the inside of the garbage can and the outside leave that for 10 minutes and that disinfects the garbage can. It works really well as a grout cleaner. It will like brighten and whiten up your grout. Another way that people use it and that it's good for your toilet is go ahead and spray down your entire toilet, put half a cup into the bowl of the toilet and then half a cup into the tank of the toilet and then let it sit for at least 30 minutes. Then come back, wipe the toilet down, scrub the inside with a brush, flush it and your toilet will be completely disinfected from top to bottom. There are like a million other ways that you can use hydrogen peroxide. I may do a, a video on that, so stay tuned. Okay, my next tip is to make your bed every day. I know that everybody says it, but they say it because it's true. It is such a good tip. It really just like gets your day started off on the right foot. And I have to say, your bed is like your main focal point of your room. So if your bed is unmade, no matter how clean the rest of your room is, the whole room looks messy. The other thing is, it only takes a couple of minutes to make your bed. If it is taking you longer than two or three minutes to make your bed, I highly encourage you to pare down your bedding. Get rid of pillows, get rid of the things that are taking a long time for you to, to make your bed because it should honestly only take a couple of minutes and it's an easy thing to do each day. Okay, my next tip, if you're trying to have a clean house, the number one way to have a clean house is to declutter first. If you have clutter everywhere, it doesn't matter how clean your house is, it will not visually look clean. Think of your kitchen. Do you have spices and books and stacks of papers? All of these kinds of things. Are they sitting on your counter? Because even if you remove them, clean the counter and then put them back, it doesn't look clean. Just think about decluttering as your number one cleaning strategy. Go throughout your house. Do you see piles of things in places? Do you have baskets of things everywhere? Where are there places that you can get rid of? If you don't know where to start, just start in the room that you're standing in. Just, you know, pick, a, pick one drawer or pick one table and say, how can I make this table look better? What can I declutter from, from this table? And then just get it out of your house. I'm telling you, decluttering is the, is the number one cleaning secret. Okay, my next tip is to have a cleaning routine. I've made a couple videos on this, but honestly, like I have a daily thing that I like to do, a weekly routine I like to do, a monthly routine that I like to do, and I even have a yearly routine of cleaning things that I like to do. It just, if I've got this routine and this schedule, it keeps everything on track, and it sort of becomes like clockwork. I don't have to think about it. It doesn't become overwhelming. I just know what it is and it gets done and everybody in the house helps out so it's not just me and we all know like what we're cleaning and when i really encourage you to have a routine especially the daily routine because you can easily make a habit of it and these sort of like clean home habits just keep your house clean and keep it going and and honestly like some of these habits they range from like a quick little tidy to speed cleaning to all the way to deep cleaning so there's just different levels of clean and you need to know which level you're going to do for which situation. Okay, and then my last tip is to stop making cleaning mistakes because you're making your life harder and you're kind of undoing all of the good work you've done. So let me tell you some of those cleaning mistakes. You can see if you're making them. There are so many more, but if you can sort of identify what mistakes you're making, then you can save so much time and you will have a cleaner house in the process. Okay, so the first cleaning mistake is to use a disinfectant to clean. We just talked about hydrogen peroxide and yes, it is a disinfectant. It's not gonna clean, clean your toilet. So when you are cleaning your toilet, you wanna use a cleaner. You wanna use something like Barkeeper's Friend or some people like the Clorox stuff and they put that in their toilet. People, people like sprays. There's all kinds of different cleaners. Go ahead and use those cleaners. And then if you want to disinfect on top of that, then you put the disinfectant on it, you spray it on and you let it sit and let it do its work. 
That's how disinfectants work. They just need to sit, kill the germs, and do their work, and then they're done. But just because the germs are disinfected doesn't mean it's clean. If you're spraying sort of like a dirty surface with disinfectant, it's going to it's gonna kill the germs that it comes into contact with, but it's not gonna get under those germs. It's not gonna get under the dirt. So it's kind of useless to just spray disinfectant on an already dirty thing. And then my other mistake is if you're using bleach to clean everything. I, I think there's a time and a place for bleach. I think it's a great cleaner for certain situations, but it doesn't clean everything. It is not an effective degreaser, so don't even bother using it to clean in your kitchen because it won't do anything. And then another mistake that people make is they kind of use the same, whether it's a microfiber cloth or a sponge, they use that same sponge to clean all of their surfaces and all of the rooms in your house. You don't wanna do that because you could be cross-contaminating different rooms, especially if you're cleaning the bathroom and then you go ahead and use that sponge maybe in the kitchen. Don't do that. Get a different sponge or a different microfiber cloth because you definitely don't want to transfer germs around the house and bring dirty things from different rooms into the other rooms. So those are my nine tips, but don't stop there. I have another video on 12 cleaning hacks that are also life-changing. Honestly, I think these tips are amazing and eye-opening. I, I hope you enjoyed them, but I definitely encourage you to check out my next video and I'll see you over there.